Welcome, Franklin County residents, and thank you for tuning in to the Candidate Forum for Franklin County Magistrate District 4 general election held on November 8th, 2022. I'm J.C. Young, and I'm honored to serve on the Chamber Governmental Affairs Committee and your moderator for this event. The Office of County Magistrate is difficult to define. The men and women that, wear, that serve these roles wear a plethora of hats. They're expected to be economists, meteorologists, architects, attorneys, agriculturalists, public figures, and the list goes on seemingly forever. As you know, the primary obligation of a county magistrate is to serve on fiscal court, and fiscal courts in Kentucky hold an immense amount of responsibility. Amongst other duties, fiscal courts have the authority to enact ordinances, issue regulations, levy permissible taxes for the purpose of statutory obligations, appropriate funds for county roads, provide for the incarceration of prisoners, fund and hold elections, and oversee operations in the county for many public functions. In this candidate forum, we're honored to have uh, for District 4 Magistrate, uh, Mr. Scotty Tracy and Mr. Daryl Sanderson. The office that you both are seeking was created in the 1792 Kentucky Constitution, and it's worthy of candidates such as yourselves. Before we begin, I'd like to thank and recognize the Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce uh, for establishing this forum and the Frankfurt Plant Board for hosting and broadcasting this event. Serving as our esteemed panelists and those doing the real work in this function, our Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce President and CEO, Ms. Tish Shade, Client Relationship Officer at Traditional Bank and Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce Executive Board Member, Ms. Annabeth Bobbitt, and President and CEO of Expree Credit Union and Chair-Elect of the Frankfurt Area Chamber of Commerce, Mr. John Graham. Candidates, you'll have two minutes for opening remarks and two minutes for closing remarks. You'll have one minute responses to questions with 30 seconds follow-ups if asked by a panelist. You'll also have two opportunities to extend your time or rebut another candidate's response. This is titled bonus time. Please signify to me that you'd like to use one of your two and I'll grant that opportunity. Uh, both of those bonus times will be one minute each. We had a draw prior to this, uh, prior to this forum and opening remarks are gonna begin with you, Mr. Sanderson. Uh, you have two minutes for your opening statement. Hi, I'm Daryl Sanderson. I currently live in the 4th District uh, off of uh, Leestown Road, and uh, I am running for Master for the 4th District. I grew up here in Frankfort. I graduated from Frankfort High School. I've lived in the county just about ever since. I graduated, uh, served six years in the U.S. Navy, came home and then served another 10 years in the National Guard. I also have served over 10 years in the Planning and Zoning Board. I've been driving a school bus. I retired about four years ago and I drive a school bus for Franklin County, been doing that for a couple of years. Uh, I worked with Sanderson Plumbing for a little over 50 years. I uh, currently uh, have uh, been working, uh, like I say, I drive the school bus, and then I do a lot of handyman work after that. So I stay real busy. I uh, have uh, enjoyed living in Frankfort. It would be my job to serve uh, the people of the 4th District, and I look forward to having that opportunity. Thank you. Ms. Tracy, you have two minutes opening statement. Thank you, and thank you all for, for having this today and allowing us to to get our message out to the people of Franklin County. I'm 4th District Magistrate Scotty Tracy. I was born and raised on Tracy Lane off of US 127 North. I attended Thornhill, Peaks Mill Elementary, Elkhorn Middle, and I graduated from Franklin County High School in 1994. I also attended Kentucky State University. I'm a 20-year veteran, or a 20-year employee for Chaz Seligman Distributing, where I'm a territory manager that oversees Franklin County, Shelby County, and other surrounding counties. My wife Jennifer and I have two amazing boys, Jacob and Caleb. We attend First United Methodist Church and we have a great uh, charcoal lab that uh, is out of control named Charlie. Um, I enjoy spending time with my family and friends, uh, boating, camping, watching my kids play ball and, and grow up. So that's a little bit about me. Our first question is going to come from Tish Shade, and it's going to be directed to you, Mr. Sanderson. You'll have a one-minute response time. How would you define a pro-growth candidate? If you consider yourself pro-growth, give us an example of how you have displayed that. Well, like I said, I've worked here in Frankfurt for 
50 plus years and and I have worked on many a projects to expand Frankfurt uh, I believe that uh, being on the planning and zoning gives me the opportunity to look forward to uh, the expansion of Franklin County we need to uh, expand our sporting sports uh, agendas uh, growing up my son played soccer so I, I believe there's an opportunity there to expand with the sports in Franklin County in order to be able to uh, invite other teams into to play the sports expand with the hotels the restaurants uh, as we did that growing up it was very profitable to those areas Mr. Tracy one minute to respond uh, yes, uh, you know, pro growth is smart growth to me. Uh, smart growth is is encouraging uh, our community to come together, and and have discussions uh, about both residential and industrial development, uh, housing options and, and transportation needs. Uh, we can't be divisive. We have to come together, uh, and I, th I think um, in the end, that's how we grow as a community. Our next question is going to come from Annabeth Bobbitt, and it's going to be directed to you, Mr. Tracy. You'll have one minute to respond. So population shifts in Kentucky are imminent, and some neighboring counties have seen large gains since our last census, uh, with the rural workforce lagging at, a, at the projected rate. Um, other counties, you know, have capitalized on this shift. What can we do in Franklin County to recruit population, new housing, and industry, all of which increases our tax base? Well, I, <clears throat> that's a great question. Um, I think it's a magnitude of things. Uh, I think we all, again, have to come to the table. Um, economic development, to me, is, uh, is creating an environment of businesses to locate here, to grow and succeed, so that they can create um, more employment opportunities, not only for our community, but uh, for, the, for the region and the state. I think we have to get the schools involved. Um, as far as um, growing businesses, uh, we also have to, to look at planning, at the planning commission. Uh, we have to make sure that we're getting things through that make sense uh, in a timely manner. Mr. Sanderson, one minute. Well, I, I agree. We need to have better growth. We need to expand our industrial uh, opportunities that we've come up on with planning and zoning being behind me I have uh, voted several times to expand uh, land so that it can be made into uh, industrial land uh, I think it's a very important to be able to bring more people in I think we need to offset the the people that leave every day from state government and bring in more people that live here on a regular basis and expand our subdivisions. Uh, we need to be able to meet the needs of the people. Uh, I think we do that in a lot of ways, but I think we come short in a lot of ways as well. Our next question is going to come from Mr. John Graham. It's going to be directed to you. Uh, Mr. Sanderson, you all have one minute to respond. In your discussions um, in the district getting ready for the election, what are the top concerns you're hearing from the business community and how do you want how will you address them? Well, fortunately, I've been out knocking on a few doors and stuff and talking to a lot of people and I've the um, Some of the disappointments is that for 20 years we've been working on expanding the river to bring in a lot more growth uh, uh, expand that as a profitable deal we need to work on the dams to make sure that they're all up and going the way we need to so that we can people can come from downriver up to uh, be able to use our waterways. Uh, we also need to work with the factories in order to be able to make sure that they have what they need and to be able to expand on those deals. Ms. Tracy, one minute. Would you repeat the question? I'm sorry. In your discussions leading up to the, uh, this election, you've talked with a lot of business leaders i'm sure what are the concerns that you're hearing from them and how will you address them business leaders and constituents both uh have uh have had well, i've had great conversation with um business wise obviously buffalo trace is a huge topic uh it's been in the planning commission it's in the, it's been in the lap of the planning commission since march uh joint committee 
uh, you name it, it's been there. It's still there. It's on a table now. So uh, that's, that's an issue because that is a successful business. Um, as far as the, the riverways, I would encourage you all to go back and watch the candidate forum. I touched on that. We were at a conference a couple weeks ago and um, spoke to uh, Judge Kay, Judge Gritton, Judge Ellis, Anderson, Woodford, and Owen. It is imperative if we want to have a downtown riverfront development to be successful, we have to get the locks open. James Kay is spearheading a letter for that. He's going to send it to the governor, to uh, Comer, uh, McConnell. That's, that's something we have to do in order for the river to be successful. Our next question comes from Tish Shade. It's going to be directed to you, Mr. Tracy. You'll have one minute. <clears throat> Should Franklin County allow Buffalo Trace Distillery to build warehouses on rural land if the company presents a plan to preserve the wetlands and woodlands and maintain a rural aesthetics on the property? One more time. Should Franklin County allow Buffalo Trace Distillery to build warehouses on rural land if the company presents a plan to preserve any wetlands and woodlands and maintains a rural aesthetic on the property? Obviously, being on the court, an active member of the court currently, uh, we've been advised by the county attorney not to get into the weeds of something that we would potentially vote on. What I can do is talk about the past, uh, that what has came to us. Again, you're, you're looking at a text amendment that was presented to the Planning Commission and, and the ones that presented it did not qualify to ask for it to be, uh, to be studied and, and or to be looked at. Uh, you're only allowed to bring that uh, if from the Planning Commission, the units of the Planning Commission, and or the land owner. So that's been brought up. It's been, uh, it's been withdrawn. And now um, the, the Planning Commission has asked staff to, to bring back a plan to them. And again, it was tabled at the last meeting. So basically, you're, at, you're asking me to, um, yeah, go ahead. you're asking uh, if I support something that I have no idea about. We don't know how much acreage it's going to take up. We don't know the size. I think at the last planning commission meeting, um, Mr. Logan asked the, uh, the, the planning staff or, or told members of the planning staff, that they needed to get the opinions from the city solicitor and the county attorney whether bourbon whiskey was even an agriculture product. So I think there's so much in limbo right now that we don't know about. To be asked, do you support something? It's hard to support something that we have no idea about. Okay. Can you repeat the question? Sure. Senator, you have one minute. Should Franklin County allow Buffalo Trace Distillery to build warehouses on rural land if the company presents a plan to reserve any wetlands and woodlands and maintains a rural aesthetic on the property? Well, I think it's a responsibility of Franklin County as a whole to realize that Buffalo Trace is going to want to expand. At our last planning and zoning meeting, we, ta we didn't table it. We sent it back to comprehensive plan so that it completely come out of our hands and it's back in that area. So as far as talking about it, I, I see no reason not. Uh, expanding it, yes, I believe that we need to figure where they can go, what, where we need to situate them at so that if we don't want them visible, then we need to make sure we don't put them visible. Uh, okay, you can use a bonus time. We need to make on. sure that we are able to need, meet their needs. I mean, Every company, and we don't want to stop a company from expanding, and they're going to want to expand. And they may want to expand three or four more times. If that's true, then we need to be able to meet those needs. Now, currently, where they want to expand, I disagree with. I just don't think it, it's a good place for it. But I do believe there's a lot of land in Franklin County that could be redeveloped to meet those needs and to be able to allow Buffalo Trace to expand as they would like to. You'd like to use your bonus, second bonus time? I just have one question. I mean, if I have to use it, I have to use it. Sure. Were in that question, you were, you were asking in regards to a specific piece of property, correct? In, is that correct? Sure. Is that the way I took Okay. I just wanted to make sure that, again, that, that that's where we were. Okay. Not okay. countywide, just one specific well, piece of property. Question. If it were to come countywide, 
would you support that? I this, think this will be a 30 second response. Okay. Both of y'all. I think again, it goes into the details of what are we talking about? What zone are we talking about? RRAA? You're looking at 57% of the county. If you go that direction, are we talking about um, AA? Are we going, how far off of the main arteries are we going to run? Are we going 10 miles back in the county? We're going five miles. What, you know, what's the, the, the specifics? Everything's in the detail. And right now we've seen, as a member of the court, I've seen nothing. Mr. Sanderson, you have 30 seconds to respond to that. Well, they're wanting to go under the, we're wanting to move them under the AG zoning, which is agricultural. And uh, the current situation is they have to have 200 acres to be able to build. So that means there's only limited spots that they're going to be able to expand in. So I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I think it's a good thing for them, and I think it will give them the opportunity to look and find property that they can build on. Our next question comes from Annabeth. Uh, it's going to be Ms. Bobbitt, directed to you, Mr. Sanderson. You'll have one minute to respond to this question. What work will you do or have you done, for Scotty, to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion in Frankfurt? <laughs> um, I'm really not sure. That's a tough question. I, um, if, if we want to go back to the Buffalo Trace, I'm working on different issues to try to make sure that they can expand, okay? Uh, diversity, I, I really just don't have an answer, true answer for that question. Mr. Tracy, you have one minute to respond to that question. Would you uh, repeat the question, please? So what work have you done to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion in Frankfurt? I think when you look at the court as a whole, being a member on the court, I think that we have actively tried to, to work and bring the community together, whether it be um, Kentucky State or whether it be um, local schools. Um, we've, we've actually started funds to, to help um, generate working together, per se. Um, housing is an, is an issue all throughout our community, uh, affordable housing. Um, we've, uh, we've got to bring people in. We've got to fill jobs. Jobs, then we have to build housing. But housing is an, is a, is an issue all over the community and other communities as well. Our next question comes from Mr. John Graham. It's going to be directed to you, Mr. Tracy, and you'll have a one-minute response. Thank you. Following up kind of on your point about housing, uh, from your perspective, what's more important for Frankfurt right now, building new houses and commercial space or rehabbing, expanding, and better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts? So are you talking in regards to infill? Yes. Okay. So the way that I look at that, I kind of figure that in as, as smart growth. If we have a, a facility, a building that's empty, and we have a new industry coming in that can fill that building, that, would, that will take care of their needs, then I think we need to do what, what we can do to get them there. The Sears building being a great example. 15 years vacant, finally someone went in. But I also realize if we don't have a facility that fits the, the company that's coming in, we have to look at building. If we don't have something to fit their needs, we have to have a space for them to build. Yes, sir. Thanks, sir. Uh, what about looking ahead? How do you try to anticipate, you know, you talked about, you know, the Sears building, that's great, but on the new, new stuff, you have to have property available. Do we have that property available if if an opportunity, if a business wants to come to town and they need a 10 or 15 acre piece of property, do we have that property? And if we don't, what is the, what do you feel is the best approach on that? Obviously, that would fall back on the economic development specialist that we have in place and her board to, to locate, to identify and locate land. I definitely believe that we're in need of a second uh, I don't, I'm not saying we need a second industrial park, but maybe a business park. And we need to be very uh, selective on who we bring in. We need it to be business, business. 
or if it needs to be industrial, it needs to be industrial. And I think that's kind of what's got us in a pickle now. I don't know how much more can go out where we're at now. Uh, so we definitely need to locate, identify, and, and go after a second site. So I'm going to ask Mr. Graham if you would repeat the first question to Mr. Sanderson. He'll have a, a one minute to respond, and then we'll ask the follow-up separately. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sanderson, what's more important for Frankfurt right now? building new homes and commercial space or rehabbing, expanding, better utilizing our existing homes and storefronts, AKA infill. I guess due to the cost of new homes and where everything has gone, I think we could maybe achieve a greater expansion of residential by rehabbing a lot of the older homes that are in the county uh, and the subdivisions. Um, as well as trying to expand and build new homes because we need to keep those contractors busy as well. So as far as industrial, I think we probably at the point that we need to develop a second uh, industrial park. We are completely full with very limited space left. There's a follow-up question to you, right. Mr. Sanderson. It's 30 seconds response. Thank you. So how do you see uh, the fiscal court's role in developing, either acquiring this land, or is it is it there now, or do we have to go out and get it? We'll have to go out and get it. I don't know of any land that's on the current agenda that would qualify as an industrial park. So we would have to go out and survey, and, and hopefully maybe with the new comprehensive plan, they'll come up with some ideas as well for us to be able to expand in, uh, into an industri industrial park, another one in Franklin County, because we definitely need to bring more industry in to serve the people of Franklin County. Uh, Ms. Tracy's asked to use his last bonus time. You have one no, minute. No, never mind. I'm good. Oh, you're I'm good? good? Yeah. Scrapping that? Okay. We're going to move on. Ms. Tish Shade uh, is going to ask this question. It's going to go to Mr. Sanderson. You'll have one minute to respond. So we keep hearing about all the red tape it issues about doing business in our community. If you could change one thing in our zoning code to help businesses get started, what would it be and why? Well... Um, it seems like we take a little bit of too much time because time planning and zoning meets, that's 30 days and it's another 30 days for physical court. And then it all has to go through Robert Hewitt down at the planning and zoning. So, I mean, it could take six months or longer just to get a project off the ground. I think we need to figure out how to fine tune that and bring it down to maybe a month so that projects and plans could be done faster. Uh, I think the planning and zoning office ought to have more lead way with their decision making so that we can be able to expedite a lot of things and get things done in much quicker. I have a follow-up question. Yes, ma'am. As, as a magistrate, what would you do to help streamline that process to make that happen? 30 seconds. Well, as a magistrate, we, have the, we would have the right to be able to do that with uh, the planning and zoning office. We could redo the office to where we wanted it to be able to streamline and make things go through quicker. Okay, uh, Ms. Tracy, if you would answer the first question, uh, you wanna ask her to repeat it? Please. And then you have a minute to respond mm -hmm. to that. We'll ask follow up next. Okay, so we continue to hear about all the red tape issues to do business in Franklin County. If you could change one thing in our zoning code, what would it be to help businesses and why? Take politics out of it. Mm -hmm. Take it completely out of it. Uh, in regards to the time, you, the chairman could call special board special meetings. That that eliminates the time. Again, I go back and touch on one that the elephant in the room, Buffalo Trace. They have been at planning and zoning since March. They were in a subcommittee that they couldn't get out of because nobody wanted to vote on it, and now it's back on the table. So they've been there since March. Take politics out of it. Keep it between the lines. Keep it about the application. Does, does it fit the guidelines to meet the rules that are required? Quit making it about the applicant and who represents or who doesn't represent the applicant. Make it about the application, and let's go forward. And she has a follow-up for you? Absolutely. So my follow-up question is, as a magistrate, what would you do to help streamline that process? 30 seconds. As a magistrate, unless the judge puts it on the agenda to discuss, and or unless a majority would go after to get that done, there's nothing we can do. Again, I think you've got a chairman at the Planning Commission. Let's take politics and everything out of it. 
it's up to them. They set the meetings. So to say 30 days, 30 days, 30 days, yeah, that's when their original meeting is. You can have special meetings and you can, you can act, but you can't sit in limbo and sit on your hands either. We've actually come to a point where, uh, where we've concluded our questions and we're going to ask for closing statements. Uh, we started with you, Mr. Sanderson, Scotty, uh, Mr. Tracy. We will uh, we'll alter, alter that a little and we'll start with you for closing remarks. You have two minutes, uh, closing remarks for the electorate. Okay. Thank you all again for having us today where we could get, our, get, get what we believe that's out there, get our voice per se. Again, hello, I'm Scotty Tracy. I'm 4th District Magistrate. As I stated back in 2014 and 2015, and I still believe today that District 4 needs a strong voice on the physical court. I also believe in order to speak uh, for the district, you must listen to the district. I am that candidate. Uh, it's imperative that District 4 has a representative uh, that is going to show up, that is going to be in touch and in tune with the issues and the concerns that's facing our district and our community. I am that candidate. Accessible knowledgeable, experienced, and committed. I'm 4th District Magistrate Scotty Tracy. I appreciate your help, your support, and I humbly ask for your vote on November the 8th. Thank you. Mr. Sanderson, two minutes. Again, my name's Darrell Sanderson. I'm running for Magistrate of the 4th District. I think it's time for change. We've been stumped for many, many years, and we're not moving forward with the different projects, different avenues that we need to take to be able to expand. I've gone out, I've knocked on doors, I've talked to people, response, from physical court, from the 4th District, and the Maastricht is just not happening. I've had a lot of people talk and appreciate the fact that I have come out and met with them, talked to them. I just think it's time for change. I think it's time for pro-growth. I think it's time for us to be able to expand Frankfurt and make it much more friendly for people to come in and want to live here. Thank you. As we close, I would like to personally thank both of you for seeking this office. You've put your name on the ballot, spent your own time and money, skipped out on family events only to serve your community, and I want you to know that it's appreciated. You've done a great job in this forum, and I wish you the best in this election. There have been some election law changes statewide in the last several years, and there's now multiple ways to cast your ballot in this election, a few of which include mail-in absentee ballots, in-person early voting before Election Day and in-person Election Day voting on November 8th, 2022. If you don't know where or how to vote, please call the Franklin County Clerk's Office at 502-875-8702 or check out their website. It's, it's loaded with current election information. Voting is a right in this country provided by our Constitution, and these election changes will hopefully increase the turnout. I sincerely hope that you honor those that have served and currently serving our country and exercise your right. It's been an honor to serve as the moderator for this event, and I'd like to thank all the folks on camera uh, that aren't on camera uh, for your work to make this possible. I'd like to thank the FPB staff, the chamber staff. That concludes this forum, and thank you for joining us.